All right, everyone, so for our second day, I've got another handout for you. We'll talk about it, and then uh, we will have an activity where if you are looking at the syllabus, our goal of what we're accomplishing today will be about setting up the webmaster tools. So here's where the handout is, in case you forgot. Your computer should be on. On the top left corner, open computer window. You'll see various drives and the network location. So double click network location, classroom data Z. We'll scroll down to my folder, which is Campos SEO Thursday. That's the notes for this class. So double click that. And remember, you want to drag out of, from my folder, you want to drag out the files that you need to your desktop or flash drive. And the one we need at the moment is the one called Client Marketing Strategy. Drag that out of my folder to your desktop or flash drive. And if you were not here last time, here's the other things we, we looked at previously. Syllabus, which has my email, company profile, a couple of drawings of concepts, and uh, one of our activities. But for today, drag the Marketing Strategy document over to your desktop. Double click it to view it from your desktop. The printer's off at the moment, so you can print during the break. And again, this is another document for you to look at. Uh, you can fill it in if you want, but it's not homework. You don't, you don't need to turn it in. Um, as I said previously, this class doesn't have any grades or certificate or anything like that. You get out of it what you put into it. So um, this, if you fill it out, I can look at it and we can discuss it, but it's not any sort of homework. And as I said previously, I teach this stuff and I do it for clients. And one of the things that we do for a client early on is to learn about them as much as possible to understand their company so that we can do a good job for the company. We want the client to succeed in SEO and such. And if they succeed, we succeed, either directly in that we get paid better from the client or we get more referrals or we get that nice warm feeling inside. So we want the client to do well, and here's how we can understand them and do and have the company do well with a marketing strategy. Now there's a whole college major. You can you know get a four-year degree and such in marketing. It's a huge topic uh, in our four-week class. We don't have time for all of that, but I'm giving you these sort of cliff notes of cliff notes. And this is the marketing strategy. So there's some questions here to answer. We'll talk about them here. And again, this class focuses on a company or a business that has perhaps a product. But if you're simply wanting to learn this yourself to get hired as a social media marketer or, or SEO guru, this also applies. If you um, have a company with uh, goods or services, products, virtual or real, uh, all of these concepts still apply. You still want to get traffic to your website. Uh, and so this activity is basically the know thyself activity. We need to know more about yourself, your company. So let's see some of these things. What do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence. So generically I'm saying, online presence. Because you could focus on simply building an awesome Twitter audience. That could be enough for your business, sure. It could be enough that you've got Twitter and eBay, and you're selling your products on eBay and getting traffic from Twitter. Sure, that could work. What could also work is having a full-featured e-commerce website and Facebook and Instagram. That could work too. What are you trying to accomplish online? Once you understand that, you can then devote your time and effort and money and energy for those goals. I've got the example. Vic.co, my personal company, wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So there's a little bit of marketing thrown in, a little bit of uh, prose thrown in powerful social media. It could have easily been wish to create a social media presence. 
But throwing in these adjectives and these superfluous words to help build a um, brand and um, an online presence of marketing is very useful because the big companies do that. They, they find an audience, they cater to an audience, they speak to the audience as the audience wants to be spoken to. So if you think about it in terms of, of a little bit more personal rather than simply mechanical answers, uh, you could better define your company and reach your audience. I'm saying that this fictional company wants to engage in a lot of social media because that's the way we're going to reach existing customers for tech support, let's say. Are our customers happy with our products? And uh, also reach new customers. We want to get evangelists on social media to also spread our message. Maybe I've got some followers on Twitter that also are, are uh, big wigs, big shots on Twitter. And they've got 500 followers each. And they say something nice about my company on their Twitter. Could drive more traffic back to my website, more sales. And then I mentioned Instagram. I want to use Instagram. I've heard of Instagram. I know that it's photos. I want to reach an audience through that. Maybe my products are very visual. It would be great to show off photos. So there are many social media platforms, but I'm saying here, I want to focus perhaps on Instagram. And you wouldn't go wrong that way because Instagram has about 400 million users worldwide, so half a billion users, and it's really worked out for them to have been acquired by Facebook. If you didn't know, Facebook bought Instagram for like literally a billion dollars a few years ago, and they grew from about like 100 million users to 400 million users in two or three years. Uh, a very big audience there. If you take the social media class, we would talk about that network and other networks and how to use them, how to use social media for business. Who is your target audience? This will help you accomplish, this will help you reach the goal that you want to accomplish something. It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product or your cause or your group, etc. But it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like that you would like to know? Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a client. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company need a website and know the value of web design. <coughs> this is very specific. My company, my web design, my fictional web design company is trying to reach this audience, these clients. Because obviously my fictional web design company could make a website for anyone, any kind of business at all, locally, globally, in theory. But when we try to reach everyone as a target audience, we might not reach anyone. We might not be reaching the people that really want to hire us. So this process of creating a persona is a very valuable thing that the big companies do. Their marketing team develops a fictional person, a fictional customer, a persona, down to as specific as, as, as they need it to be. Name and the birth date and what school they went to and their economic bracket and everything because then it helps to know we are going to sell our tacos directly to John Smith in Peoria, Illinois who has this particular income and likes this music. Once we know who we're selling to we can post, post stuff on Twitter or Instagram etc that really resonates with that persona. A fictional persona does fit a real person. So if we know who we're trying to market to, who we're trying to sell our product to, or our cause, or who we really want to read our blog posts, or who would really care about my surrealist paintings, um, if we know who we're going for, we can target them better. Because that's a lot of what marketing is, the right message for the right person. A big scattershot approach is not going to hit who we want to. A targeted approach 
is better. So in my sentence here, it's very dense. I'm saying people that are trendy but know what they want. So I'm looking for people with an ear to the industry, people that are trendy, they follow trends, what's new, what's hot. Speaking of which, have you guys heard of the newest, trendiest social network that just came out a week ago? You said it was Twitch. Well, that was a trick question because you're in my class. <laughs> I told my wife, and about 20 minutes later, somebody sent her something about Peach. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you weren't in my other classes, Peach. Peach is the newest social network at the moment. It's iPhone only, iOS only. You, you, it's not on Android yet or anything else. But it just came out a week ago. People are jumping on the bandwagon. Um, it's a trendy thing. It might fizzle out. It might gain momentum. Who knows? But this persona is we're going to pursue people that are up to the up to the minute, up to the trends of technology, let's say. So I have a question. Yes. Regarding about targeting audience, well this targeting audience is based on the research of a specific, right? Because if you before you start up, you don't know exactly how many partners who you are, but you can be guessing by you know according to research and data, similar company to target the audience. To make it yes, like that, right? and there's no wrong answer to that. If you have data, if you have access to data to find this answer, good. If you don't know where to start, it's perfectly fine just to start to have ideas. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. And maybe you don't have the data for it, but you start to target an audience, and as you do it longer, you start to hone in on exactly your audience. So you might well, not via have... Feedback? Via feedback or more research, okay. reading up on blogs and such, checking out the competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's no actual website where you can look up market demographics, really. You have to do your own research uh, online, offline, questionnaires, all of that to, to find that specific audience. So furthermore, this persona here, there are going to be people in their 30s because I could get hired uh, by any age range to make a website uh, for my fictional company. But I want to go for those that are in their 30s, successful, and own their own company. They are the head of some company, maybe a startup, a brand new company that just started. They got money from their relatives. They've got their own company. Uh, they're in that age range, and I'm targeting them because obviously I could go higher age, lower age, no problem. But the more I dilute my target, the harder it might be to hit that target. Um, they need a website, and they know the value of web design. This is literally and figuratively value as in that they understand that investing in a good website or social media and such will pay them dividends. It will work out if they have a great online presence. Uh, not, you know, I, in this scenario I wouldn't want to get hired even if they're already ready to pay me. I wouldn't want to get hired by someone that doesn't believe that this stuff will work because that might be problems down the road. I also wouldn't want to get hired by someone that doesn't understand the value of this literally, as in it costs real money to do this. Because people could possibly believe you that this thing that is in your pocket costs $500. Sure, it's got a lot of technology, it's got a cool camera, GPS, I can get all the apps. Okay, sure, it's the latest technology, it's yeah, $500, $400. But people don't believe that a website would be $500, $200, $1,000, $7,000. Sometimes people don't believe that. They just see it as dots on the screen. They just see it as frivolous Twitter. They don't understand that it does have a value. Because the big companies do. McDonald's or this school, uh, all the big names, they know this and they spend thousands, if not millions of dollars on a good website, plus social media, all that stuff that seems not real just because it's on a screen or in your pocket. So we're going to go for the people that understand that it's important to have a good website and social media and also to pay for it. Not $200 for a website. Not $1,000 for a website. We're going to start at $3,000. And yes, that is going to exclude a lot of people, a lot of mom and pop, mom and pop shops. But we're not going for that clientele anyway. And maybe it would be difficult to turn down a job that someone's ready to pay. They haggled it down to $750. Okay, do you need that 750 so much, or is that 750 going to be an indicator of how much more haggling and complexity this client is going to heap upon you? So it's nice if you can turn down a client, and if you can't, you have to decide how you're going to handle that.
but in the long term, once you know an audience who you're going for, you can better serve them and get get good results. Do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, or etc. That, that you feel is in competition with you that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design and their style is unique and modern. One of the things we did at the end of last week was we did that competitor analysis. We saw what the competition was doing by doing keyword research. We saw that these companies are number one, number two, number three on a Google search, on a Bing search because of these keywords and we wanted to find out why. Let me check out their website. What are they offering? They're also on social media. I'm not. They're all, they also have good reviews on Yelp. I don't. We're checking the competition. Aspirational. Who are we trying to be like but better? Who do we see as doing something good that we want to do gooder? Who do we want to surpass? Um, and you don't have to narrowly focus exactly on your niche because as an example, one of the clients, I believe I showed them last week, that restaurant, the Quies Texcoco, they're a Mexican food restaurant specializing in, in lamb barbecue. Um, and when we did this for that restaurant tour a few years ago, we asked him, well, who's your competition? Who do you want to be like? Who, uh, who's your goal? And he said, Phil's Barbecue. How many of you have heard of Phil's Barbecue? So Phil's Barbecue, if you haven't, is a local San Diego barbecue restaurant. Um, they're very famous, um, which of course is in his opinion, in San Diego for barbecue. Um, and you would think, well, that's classic American barbecue. How does that relate to Mexico-style barbecue? Well, the owner says what he wants to aspire to is to have a 40-minute wait out the door seven days a week. Like Phil's barbecue. At the moment, my client has uh, has a 40-minute wait on weekends. So eventually he wants to get that seven days a week. He's seeing someone that has that goal. He wants to reach and perhaps surpass that goal. He also wants to be synonymous with, me with good Mexican food or authentic Mexican food in San Diego, like Phil's barbecue is synonymous with barbecue in San Diego. So you don't have to narrow you don't have to narrowly focus on an exact competitor. This is related to food and cuisine in San Diego and such, and that's why that client had that goal. And it works because then we would see what they're doing, how can it apply to this client, how can we make it unique for this client, and maybe surpass the competition. vision statement. Now, as you recall before going on, when we talked last time, SEO is not just keywords, not just working on your website. What was that other thing that I said? SEO and something else? SEM. S-E-M. S-E-M. Search engine marketing. So it's not just SEO, search engine optimization, it's search engine marketing. And this is one of these SEM aspects of things. We're going to do some marketing. It goes hand in hand now. So we've got a vision statement last week. A mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. We may set a time horizon in five years, for example. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. On the previous activity, we had the mission statement where we tell the world where we're at at the moment. This is where we're going. We're going to be known for eye-catching web design and focusing on elegant restaurants. Again, part of that figuring out that persona and the competition, we're going to be targeting this. 
because we as a web design company could make a website for any realtor, any CPA, any nonprofit organization. Everyone wants a website. But we're going to focus on restaurants, elegant restaurants, meaning they have the money to run an elegant restaurant and to pay us because they also understand the value of a good website. I didn't put a time horizon here, but I could have easily said within five years, within 10 years, whatever. And so, as we saw last time, we can get examples of mission and vision statements on just about any website that knows about this. You can visit any big name website, you know, nike.com, ucsd.edu. You can go look up mission and vision statements on just about any serious website, usually in the about page, sometimes in the investor page. So you can look those up to get um, inspiration. Then there's the USP, Unique Selling Proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question of why. That is, why would a client hire you? This piggybacks on what we talked about last week with Simon Sinek's concept of the golden circles. Remember those three circles? The drawing is in the folder but it was the outer circle of uh, what, how, and why. And the why was the harder one to answer. But why would someone hire you? Why are you doing what you're doing and then could get hired by someone that needs that? The example here, Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So that's about, again, the specialization. San Diego companies. We want to make websites for San Diego companies. We could make websites for LA companies, New York companies. Um, you know, uh, Mumbai companies, wherever. We could make websites for anyone, anywhere. But we're focusing on San Diego because we also are from San Diego. We know the local culture. We live and breathe San Diego. We can provide the best results for a San Diego-based company. That's answering the why. Why would local San Diego-based company hire us? Because we're a local San Diego-based company. As we searched last time, yeah, me and 1,000 other web designers in San Diego. Perhaps I can get a little bit more specific here, but the more I figure this out and fill it in, the more I can concentrate on USP. Maybe I can say, furthermore, we are up to the latest technologies and are always looking at uh, the trends in social media, and we have effective results which we transfer to our clients. So it's always the harder one to figure out. But this marketing strategy then is a step into developing a plan about how am I going to set up and run my, my website, my Twitter, my Facebook, my YouTube, my LinkedIn, whatever you're doing online, your Yelp, your eBay, whatever it is. This is a strategy then for marketing to help you to think about these concepts like a big professional company that spends thousands if not millions of dollars on marketing because it works. Some of these big name companies spend a lot of their budget on selling you something, marketing to you. Um, like movies is a classic example. I read about how let's say a movie costs 10 million dollars to make, which is a very cheap movie actually. Let's say it costs $10 million to make a movie. The studio is then going to spend $40 million to market it, to make sure everyone knows it by putting it on billboards and on Twitter and on the radio and on Snapchat. They're going to spend $40 million to bring that audience to their $10, $10 million movie to recuperate the $10 million of the movie and the $40 million of the marketing, so they need to get at least $50 million back to break even, and it's all marketing, and it works. You might think about, how did that terrible movie get such 
you know, that, that movie had terrible reviews. How did it make so much money? Well, they had a lot of strong marketing to bring an audience to it. I have to say the more you spend the better but we don't have I'll have a big budget but I do have to tell you from the companies that I've worked with if they spend more they get more back mm -hmm. and um, as a beginner we don't have a big budget whatever you're able to spend for example Facebook if you take this face the social media class in there I talk about using the social media for free and it's effective but what's more effective is actually paying a little bit, paying for Facebook ads, paying for Twitter ads. You can pay as little as one dollar and you can still reach more of an audience as if instead of if you haven't paid. So the more you can, um, the better. No, nope. like I said, it's not homework. You're not going to turn it in. You can fill it in and I can look at it if you'd like, but um, it's not something to turn in. So any general questions then on this uh, this sheet? Okay, so that's something to think about. You can fill it out at some point if you'd like. I'll look at it if you'd like. And um, we'll be shifting gears in just a moment to look at other things. But I teach this class with a strong emphasis on SEO and SEM, marketing, because it does relate. And if you're only if you're learning about this and you're really only looking at SEO, which is stuff you do on your website, you're only getting half the picture. The other half is SEM. What are you doing outside of your website?